Hey dudes, Silvette Soltis here, and today I'm excited to be doing another Get Geared Fast guide. With Classic out and people quickly, or slowly in my case, approaching level 60, I thought it'd be fun to explore my original character's spec, the Shadow Priest. And since Shadow Priests and Warlocks focus on obtaining the same gear for the most part, this guide will apply to both. Also, I'd like to quickly apologize for the inaccuracies in any of my previous guides. All of my guides were made under the assumption that only items that were obtainable between patches 1.0 and 1.2 would be available in phase 1. Since my last guide, we found that Classic is using the patch 1.9 loot tables until phase 5 meaning that there are many more items that can be obtained for most of the classes I went over previously, and for much longer. That being said, the dungeons themselves are pretty much the same for those classes, so the guides will still hold up, though they just don't necessarily give enough information now. Sorry for that. But anyway, with that little blurb out of the way, let's talk about how you can gear up your Shadowcaster fast whenever you cap, between phases 1 through 4 of WoW Classic. As always, keep in mind that you can jump around the different steps as you please, so think of them more like to-dos rather than steps. But yeah, let's get right into it. Step 1. Blackrock Death's Detention Block and Arena Farms. Starting at around level 50 or so, you should try to get into some BRD runs for the first portion of the dungeon, the detention block and arena. Now the full dungeon contains 16 potentially useful items for shadow priests and warlocks, but honestly speaking, there's not a huge reason to run the full dungeon as one of these classes, since most of the best items you can obtain here drop toward the beginning. In particular, you'll want to try to pick up the Kentic Amiss from High Interrogator Gerstan, the Spritecaster Cape from Houndmaster Grebmar, and, most importantly of all, the Banthok Sash from Oakthor the Breaker in the Arena event. Now this last item is extremely important to aim for, as it's one of only three dungeon items you can obtain, with plus spell hit, the other two being another belt with node plus damage, and a necklace in Stratholme Live. So, just get started early on this. There are many other items you can try for later on in this dungeon as well, such as the Omnicast Boots from Golem Lord Argomach, and Burst of Knowledge from Ambassador Flamelash. At early levels, however, it might be difficult to go that far into the dungeon. Still, there are great items that are worth your attention at level 60, so expect to come back here again. Step 2. Quests out in the world. As you get closer to level 60, or when you're tired of running BRD repeatedly, try to complete the quest chains ending in In Dreams, It's Dangerous to Go Alone, The Battle of Darrow Shire, and Order Must Be Restored for Alliance, or The Scarlet Oracle Demetria for the Horde. All four items that you get as rewards are solid items which will serve you well at level 60. If you manage to get the cloak from Houndmaster Grebmar early on though, you could skip in dreams. Or if you're a shadow priest, you could opt for the healing ring instead, to use when you're healing. Getting the wand Storm Rager might be particularly challenging due to the elite quests involved, but it is a guaranteed wand that's halfway decent so it's better than praying to R and Jesus constantly later on. Here are the items that you can obtain from these quests, as well as which quests awards what item. Step 3. More Dungeons Okay, assuming that you are now at level 60, and you've done all the quests that you really feel like knocking out, it's time to focus on the dungeons. After combing through all of the loot tables and available items in phases 1 through 4, 
I found that three dungeons in particular are the most lucrative for shadowy spellcasters. Blackrock Depths, Stratholme Undead, and Skull Immense. We'll start with BRD, since it's the dungeon that you've probably already run by this point. There are 16 total caster-appropriate drops here, with 5 items that are especially great. Just as I mentioned in step 1, you'll really want to run the detention block and the arena to get the shoulders, back, and waist. But once you're capped and working on your Molten Core and Anixia attunement quests, you should definitely aim for the items deeper in. Namely, the Omnicast Boots from Golem Lord Argomach, and Burst of Knowledge from Ambassador Flamelash. But if you don't get the boots here, no worries. There's an even better pair of boots in one of the other dungeons. When you've finished up your attunements, head over to the Eastern Plaguelands to hit up Stratholme Undead. Like Blackrock Depths, there are 16 potential caster items here, but four in particular stand out far more than the rest. The Crimson Felt Hat from Magistrate Bartholas, Anastari Heirloom from Baroness Anastari, Maleki's Foot Wraps from Maleki the Pallid, and, for Shadow Priests, Scepter of the Unholy from Baron Rivendare. Of course, there are many excellent items to obtain here beyond these four, and you can see a full list of the drops and quest rewards associated with Stratholme over on my blog. But considering how great these ones in particular are, it's hard to even consider skipping this dungeon. And finally, the third dungeon you should prioritize as a Shadow Priest or Warlock is Skull Immense. This dungeon is by far the most lucrative one for Shadowcasters, with a whopping 26 potential drops, seven of which are absolutely amazing. The only reason I mentioned Skull Immense last is the pure superiority of some of the other dungeon's items. Crimson Felt Hat beats out the Devout Crown for a Warlock any day. Plus, there just aren't any boots that you can reasonably expect to get in Skull Immense, or from crafting, whereas Stratholme Undead and BRD both have amazing boots, so you'll really want to run both of those dungeons anyway. So, with all that said, you should definitely make it a point to run Skull Immense to have a crack at some excellent items. So, let's go over the ones that you should keep an eye out for, shall we? First off is the Dark Advisor's Pendant, which drops from Vectus, but has a very low drop chance. The Deadwalker Mantle from Rattlegore is also really good. Next up is the Burial Shawl, which drops from the six mini-bosses at the end of the dungeon, and is just a bit better than the Deadwalker Mantle. Alana's Embrace from Ras Frost Whisper also has a low drop chance, but it is epic and pretty solid, so keep an eye out for that. Clutch of Andros from Kirtanos the Herald is the other waste item that has hit but it doesn't have any spell power, so hopefully you got that one from BRD. Witchblade from Darkmaster Gandling is a pretty good one-hander. And last but not least, the Bone Creeper Stylus from Darkmaster Gandling is an amazing wand that both Shadow Priests and Warlocks should really aim for. When you combine these seven items with all of the other potential loot and quest rewards associated with Skull Immense, it's really a dungeon that's worth diving into. Step 4. The Tailored Stuff It should come as no surprise that professions will provide great rewards to those who take the time to level them up. And as a Shadowcaster in particular, you have a range of items that you could obtain fairly easily. That being said, the dungeons will definitely be the more scenic route with friendly adventurers along the way. But if you just can't get an item to drop, here are five solid items with plus shadow damage that you could potentially get. The Felcloth set. There is the Warlock-specific Robe of the Void that you could be working on as well. 
However, I wouldn't recommend working on this simply because the grind is really intense. And honestly, you can much more easily obtain Robe of Winter Knight instead, which is arguably better due to it having intellect instead of stamina. Plus, if you're playing a Shadow Priest, you can't equip the Warlock Robe anyway. If it's still Phase 1, you should be pretty much done by this point. However, if you've capped in Phase 2 or later, continue watching. There's more you can do. Step 5. Dire Maul West and North If you're capping your Shadow Priest or Warlock in Phase 2 or later, you get the added benefit of having Dire Maul available to you right off the bat. Now unfortunately, there aren't that many amazing items in these dungeons, but the ones that are there are really good. Dire Maul East really has nothing to write home about. The West and North Wings, however, have some really interesting loot. Starting with the West, there are 8 potential useful drops, and 3 of them are extremely good. They include the Amplifying Cloak from Magister Calendris, Robe of Everlasting Night from Imolthar, and Blade of the New Moon from Imolthar again. As always, there are many more items that drop, so take a look over on my blog on Blogspot for a full list there. Next up is DM North. This particular wing of the dungeon is home to 8 useful drops for Shadowcasters, with 2 of them being extremely useful. However, there are also 3 quests with excellent rewards that are associated with this wing, making it by far the most lucrative of the DM instances. The best drops here are the Sublime Risk Guards from Guard Moldar and Guard Slipkick, and, of course, the infamous Rod of the Ogre Magi from completing a tribute run. In addition to these, you can also obtain the questful rewards Beads of Ogre Mojo from Falrin's Vendetta, the Warlock's Trinket, Royal Seal of Eldrethalos from the quest Harnessing Shadows, and Gordok's Hand Wraps from the quest Unfinished Gordok Business. All in all, it's a great dungeon if you're capping after Phase 1. Just make sure to get the quests. Step 6. Visit the Auction House. Okay, you're all dungeoned out, and getting really tired of summoning people, or being forced to heal just to get a spot in the dungeon. Well, now what? As always, you can head over to the auction house and pick up some high-level greens and blues, just to round out your set, of course. Just remember, though, that people nowadays really know the value of some of these items, so you might need to spend a bit extra to get the best items. Still, it beats running Stratholme for the 700th time, I'm sure. Congratulations on getting your Shadow Priest or Warlock to level 60, and good luck with the gearing process. Obviously, this guide is quite extensive, as there's simply so many things that you can do to gear up in Classic, but that's part of the experience. It's worth noting that there are also some potentially great items in Blackrock Spire, like the Briarwood Reed, for example, as well as in Stratholm Live, but since the whole point is to get geared as quickly as possible, it didn't seem right to throw in those dungeons just for one or two items. Really, if you just do the quests, run BRD, Strat Undead, and Skull Immense, then craft some items and check the auction house, you should be more than good to go for Molten Core and Anixia no matter what phase it is. But anyway, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this guide or found it useful, let me know by leaving a comment down below. Also, check out my blog over on Blogspot, where I have all of this written up, as well as a full list of all items obtainable in each of those dungeons, as well as from quests associated with those dungeons. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter for updates on what I'm doing next, 
and consider supporting me over on Patreon if you're into that sort of thing. Thanks again for watching, and as always, take it easy, guys.